Um, well, I want to welcome you to WMNF Pinellas County Mosquito Control Education Outreach Specialist, Alyssa Biro. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. And what can you tell us about the mosquito season this year? Are there more mosquitoes in Pinellas County and in the region than, than normal? So that's one of the really interesting things about this year. So we have experienced a dramatic increase in the number of service requests we get. And usually that's tied to really high mosquito populations or something else happening such as when Zika hit Florida. However, this year we have really average numbers of mosquitoes. And even in some months such as June, we actually had below average numbers of mosquitoes. Part of that was because as you all know, we didn't really get that rain that we typically get earlier in the season. It stayed relatively dry until recently. So the breeding habitat that's typically around the county that increases with all those rains, it just really wasn't there. But we were still seeing a lot of complaints about mosquitoes. The unique thing about this year is that with those mosquito complaints, what we saw is that the majority of those are tied to container breeders, which are the mosquitoes that are specially adapted to live around people and they're, they're the ones that live in your backyard and in clogged gutters and any other kind of container around your yard. And part of the reason that you might be getting more calls is simply because more people are at home or they're spending time near their houses outdoors because of COVID-19. Exactly. And that's one of the unique things that we've seen this year. We really think that a lot of these complaints are stemming from those mosquitoes that are there. They may have been there all along, but one thing that's happening is because people are working from home, maybe their kids are staying home this summer instead of going to camps. People are spending a lot more time at, at, a lot more time at home and outdoors in their backyard, and they're starting to see a lot of these mosquitoes. Well, since we're talking about COVID-19, I think we know the answer to this, but I might as well get you on the record talking about it. Can mosquitoes transmit the coronavirus? That's a great question, and that's one that we want to always address and make sure everybody knows that we're not worried about mosquitoes transmitting COVID-19. They don't transmit COVID-19 or that virus. So at least we don't have to worry about mosquitoes in that respect. We're speaking with Alyssa Barrow, Mosquito Control Education Outreach Specialist with Pinellas County, and this is WMNF Tampa. You're listening to WMNF's Midpoint. I'm Sean Canan. Well, you were mentioning containers a few minutes ago, so why don't you tell people some of the most common places where mosquitoes can breed and what you can do to around your house to make this, that less of an opportunity for mosquitoes? Absolutely. So mosquitoes only need, and especially these mosquitoes that are container breeders, only need a bottle cap of water to breed. That's not very much water, um, as you can see. So what you need to do is you need to look for any source of water. So the big ones that we always think of are if you have clogged gutters, that can be an issue, bird baths, pet dishes, um, and even flower pot saucers. So especially if it hasn't been raining and you've been watering your flower pots or if we have had a, even a slight drizzle, I think that water that collects at the bottom can always breed mosquitoes. Some special things to think about is if you have bromeliads, that center portion that creates a dip where water collects can also breed mosquitoes. The big thing that you can do with a lot of these is if it's something like a bird bath where you wanna keep water in it, make sure to flush it out just once a week. You don't need to do it every time it rains. Um, flush it out once a week and that will break the uh, cycle of mosquitoes. For others, if you can dump the water, absolutely dump it. And if you can't dump it, one of the best suggestions I have, including for those bromeliads, is you can, at any kind of home improvement store, find a granular product that is called BTI is the active ingredient. Now that's a soil bacteria that has been isolated and it's specific just to mosquitoes and black flies. So this is safe around pets, it's safe around your children, it's even safe for frogs and other wildlife and birds. So you can use that and sprinkle that inside of something like a bromeliad and control mosquitoes that way. Why does flushing the water out break the cycle of the mosquito? Tell us more about the mosquito life cycle and how it, it uses this water. Absolutely. So these mosquitoes in specific will lay their eggs along the water line of any of those containers. 
as the water hits those eggs, they hatch. And no matter what kind of mosquito you are, any kind of species, you need to live in the water when you're a larva and a pupa. So those stages you can think about in terms of a butterfly life cycle that everybody's more familiar with. Same life cycle, it's essentially like the caterpillar in the chrysalis stage, only they do this in the water. So by dumping that water or flushing it, or by adding the BTI, which they ingest, and it actually, unfortunately for them, rips them open from the inside because it produces this crystalline structure, um, that will take care of the mosquitoes before they ever become an adult to bite and become a nuisance. How much longer does mosquito season last? Unfortunately, because we live in Florida, this is a year-round thing. However, in terms of when the peak mosquito season is, we're really hitting our stride right now, especially with these rains. So we can expect to kind of see higher mosquito populations through part of the fall, at least until October. So it's really good to remain vigilant and get out there once a week and be dumping the standing water. We're speaking with Alyssa Barrow, who's the Mosquito Control Education Outreach Specialist with Pinellas County, and you're listening to WMNF's Midpoint. Alyssa, what can you say about the diseases that mosquitoes can transmit? What are some of the, the diseases that humans should be concerned about? So here in Florida, some of the diseases that can actually be transmitted year-round, but currently we're in the peak season for, would be something like West Nile. Um, that typically peaks in September around our area. However, it starts transmission heavily around July, August, and in through September. Part of that is because things like Eastern equine encephalitis, another disease that we want to think about, and West Nile, those are typically transmitted from bird to mosquito to bird. When we have a lot of the birds that come through here for migration, they can pick up West Nile in a different part of the country and bring it here, but it's also endemic here, which means it's currently cycling at all times of the year. So whenever mosquito populations get a lot bigger, a mosquito can go from biting an infected bird to biting a human and being able to transmit something like Eastern equine encephalitis or West Nile. Some of the other ones that we think about are, say, dengue. You may have heard that in South Florida, down in the Keys, they're having some dengue cases currently, and things like Zika. These are all passed by those container mosquitoes that we talked about that we really want to make sure we're dumping out standing water for. Now, these diseases aren't something that are currently cycling in our area. It's not something that we see all the time, but it does pop up because people will travel to an area, get bit by an infected mosquito, and bring it back because we have those mosquitoes that can transmit it, we wanna make sure that we're not bringing back a disease and then harboring those mosquitoes that can start the disease cycle here. Are there cases of West Nile in the Tampa Bay area right now? Currently, I haven't seen any human cases of West Nile. And um, as of this past week, our sentinel chickens, um, which we use to detect any kind of antibodies to triple E, Eastern equine encephalitis, West Nile virus, and St. Louis encephalitis. We haven't seen any positives on those sentinel chickens in Pinellas County. In Broward County, though, in, there are cases this week that I'm not sure if you've heard this, but there are, there are cases in Broward of West Nile, so it is actively spreading in Florida. Absolutely. It is actively sp spreading in Florida. And actually, like I said, this is exactly the time of year you want to be especially vigilant for it because starting in July and definitely peaking in September, this is where we really start to see West Nile. Well, as we talk about mosquitoes and mosquito control, what can you say about the types of mosquito control that the county does, that Pinellas County does, for example? How, how does the county keep mosquitoes in check? So that's a really great question. So what the county does is we focus on attempting to get mosquitoes before they ever become an adult. And the reason for this is because as an adult, they're already a nuisance and they can spread diseases, but we also have a lot more environmentally friendly tools and different tools in our toolbox that we can use to control mosquitoes as larvae as opposed to as an adult. Now we do integrated mosquito management, which means that we use a lot of different methods, starting with trying to get, encourage people to dump out standing water. So education is part of that. And the other is that when mosquitoes are larvae, we can use things such as BTI, which we talked about, and some other um, 
insect growth regulators such as methoprene is another one, which it prevents mosquitoes from becoming an adult. They stay in that juvenile stage forever until they're unable to uh, continue. So we try and look for breeding habitat and we're always checking them. So our technicians, their job is to go to sites that we know breed consistently and treat as they come up on those. And they also do service requests. So one of the things that can help out citizens is that if you're experiencing mosquitoes, you can contact us and we'll come to your house. And not only will we show you what problem we found with mosquitoes, but also we'll treat it for free. None of that is at an extra cost to a citizen. How is methoprene applied? Methoprene is typically applied in a granular form. So um, and it, what did you say? By hand, you would, the, the, the person would. We have a couple of different options. So you can apply it by hand. Um, most of our larvicides are going to be in a granular form. Sometimes they can be mixed with water. We actually have a truck called with a device that's called an A1. And essentially what this does is it takes those kind of granular forms, you mix it with water, and it produces a very fine droplet that shoots it out with a fan. Um, out into the breeding habitat. So it's able to get those tiny pockets of water. Like I said, they only need a bottle cap of water. And this is still using that, um, that BTI, that uh, soil bacteria, um, instead of using something else. So that's one way that we can apply it. Um, it can also be done by our helicopter. So if you live in Pinellas County, you may have seen a helicopter that's flying around that's mosquito control. We do not ever spray out of the helicopter. That's a common misconception that we have an aerial spray program. So we'll never control adults through the helicopter. It's all those granular products such as BTI or methoprene that we're applying to larger areas such as swamps. We're getting in there by hand to do it by hand or with a backpack is not feasible. What are the side effects then of methoprene? So in terms of methoprene, when it's used at the rate that, it's, that you use for the label and what we use it at, it is specific to mostly mosquitoes. It doesn't have alterations on top of that to other insects. Um, so this is very, it's, it's very specific to mosquitoes used at the rate low enough to just affect them. I got a press release from Hillsborough County Mosquito Management and that press release said that they would be applying aerial applications of a chemical called Dibrom to control adult mosquitoes. Uh, does Pinellas County use Dibrom and what do you know about that chemical? So we don't use Dibrom. Um, we do adult aside, um, but we, unlike some of the other counties around us, other counties will utilize something like an aerial program. They'll use, they'll fly with it. We only do this through fogging trucks. So we do this between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. And the purpose of that is to avoid people and pollinators. So during that time period, you're not going to have, bees are typically inside their hive. Most people are not out and about. And we will spot treat different areas that have either virus activity or a very high population of adult mosquitoes using a truck and using ULV fogging. However, we don't, specifically use that chemical, no. Do you know anything about the chemical and what its effects might be? Um, I would have to look at the, uh, I would have to look at the actual uh, label for that one. And finally, can residents opt out of getting their neighborhoods fogged? No, um, res residents cannot opt out of getting their neighborhood fogged. Um, we we fog specifically as a spot treatment, like I said, for virus activity and for really high populations of mosquitoes, which can lead to transmission of virus. So when we do this, it's really only to knock down the adult population for a very brief time so that we do not have anybody getting sick. It's a public health measure. Well, Alyssa Barrow, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about mosquitoes and Pinellas County and how people can control mosquitoes in their yards? Anything else you'd like to add? I would just like to remind everybody that it's great to be dumping out your standing water once a week. You know, it definitely helps not only you, but it can help your neighbors. So always encourage your neighbors around you to dump out standing water as well. These container breeding mosquitoes 
obviously are really difficult for Pinellas County Mosquito Control to take care of without having service requests because they're in people's private property. So if you dump out stand, standing water and if you have an issue, you can give us a call for a service request. Again, we come out, we'll show you where we're finding the mosquitoes, we'll treat for free, and um, we will go to uh, other houses in your neighborhood um, to look for more of the issue. So please give us a call. You can give us a call at 727-464-7503. You can also get us on C-Click Fix at any time. Well, Alyssa Barrow, thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Midpoint. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me.